flower friends, it's Nicole from Flower Hill Farm and today is the first day in several days where it's not raining so I'm outside getting some much needed tasks accomplished. So I don't know if you remember but about maybe a month ago, several videos ago, I potted up some bare root astilbes into some containers. Can you even see it behind me? <laughs> So I potted those up because I knew I wasn't gonna be able to get them in the ground as quickly as I wanted to. So they've been very happy in these pots. They have lots of fresh growth on them. And these, let's just see. These are Bressingham Beauty Astilbes. They are not little spire Russian sages. This is just the pot that I'm using. So these are Bressingham Beauty Astilbes and I have about 25 or 30 of them. I ordered 25 and I had my husband till up a brand new section next to our tree line. Now with stillbees prefer a little bit of shade, especially in the hot afternoon sun. So this is perfect for this area. I also planted yesterday in the rain, <laughs> mock orange trees in this same spot. It gets full sun in the morning and then afternoon it's on the other side of this tree line and this tree line is completely filled in with green leaf so they won't have the afternoon sun. So which is okay for the mock oranges, they can tolerate a partial shade. So I did plant 35 mock oranges here yesterday and now I'm gonna go ahead and put all of these Bressingham Beauties in. These were sourced from Ball. It's a wholesale company, you need to have a business license to order from them. You can also get a still be bare roots on several other gardener websites. So I didn't actually measure this space. I know we just got a new six foot wide tiller. So the, si the size itself is six feet wide. I have no idea how long it is. I just had him till all the way to the road. So I did put several bare roots in each one of these pots. So I'm kind of just gonna dump it out and see what I have. Uh, obviously I've had, I think I have like three or four in this one. Okay. Oh, that's just one coming up in multiple locations, which is great. So I'm gonna be spacing these. It says the best practice is 12 to 18 inches apart. I'm gonna go with 18 because then I won't have to thin them, you know, in as quickly as if I did 12. So I kind of saw a picture online of what I want it to look like. So I'm gonna put it up against the back of this. That way I can fill the front with other things. The soil is nice and loose, already has a ton of leaf, leaf litter and all that stuff. So it's nice and, and delicious for these bare roots. And when I say 18 inches apart, I don't measure it. I just kind of guess. This is a mock orange tree right here. I thought I put multiple in here, but I don't think I did. You might ask, where are your chickens? Why aren't they destroying all of this? Well, I haven't let them out yet this morning, except for one little devil. Hey, hey, come here, girl, come here. Hey, hey is out, and she just surprised me by clucking right next to my heels. I didn't even know she was out. So hey, hey is, um, she's broody, and she's laying underneath my porch on her eggs. I don't have a rooster. She's been doing this for about a month, so she She's eating the third now. Girl, you better get away. Hey, hey. You look so healthy. You can eat the bugs, but not my plants. Okay, I'm watching you. Okay, oh, 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 up, that's, up. that's one of my plants right there. Yeah, don't you talk back to me. Okay, so I just counted it up. I have 24 of the Bressingham Beauties. Uh, one of them, it's, it's in here, um, just dead. Didn't, 
it wasn't showing any signs of life, so I'm not even gonna bother planting it because then my spacing will be all screwed up. So the next batch of astilbes that I have to put in are Visions in Pink, and this is where I kind of just put them all in this old window box, and um, I'll put these like beautiful, fresh white roots coming off. I don't know how many of these I have, I'm just gonna go until I can't go anymore. So astilbes actually make a beautiful landscape plant. They're absolutely gorgeous, but they also make a great cut flower. Now, if you harvest them when the bottom florets are open but the top is still tight, then they'll last longest for you in the vase. They also make a great dried flower. So I'm excited to use them in all aspects of, of the flower itself. So they bloom in late spring, early summer. My foot's cramping. <laughs> I'm cramping my butt. Okay, so late spring, early summer bloomers. I am not sure if these are gonna produce flowers for me the first year. I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope that I get something out of them. But if not, that's okay. This is kind of investment in the future. I actually cannot wait to see what this looks like with the astilbes up against the tree line. By the time, so we're in, oh, this apple right here has apple blossoms all over it. This is one of, we have probably 25 or 30 um, apple, crab apple trees on the property. And this is always the first one to get blossoms. Uh, the rest, the whole road is lined with them. Those are not in bloom yet, well, in blossom yet. They haven't even set buds yet. I think if all things are correct, the apples will be in blossom at the same time as the astilbes. So I'm really hoping that that's gonna be the case. I think it'll be absolutely gorgeous. Um, and so the mock oranges in front. I don't know if you guys are familiar with mock oranges. They are a very sweet smelling plant. They can grow up to 10 feet tall or so if you let them. I'm gonna be pruning on them. So, ooh, maybe the mock orange will be in bloom at the same time as the apple blossoms, or the apples and the astilbe. That would be amazing. So I ordered, I don't remember how many, um, but I also ordered some forsythia. So the forsythia is a yellow blooming, beautiful uh, tree that, well, it's kind of like a shrub that grows around here. And I ordered an 18 pack from Proven Winners. They're coming with my hydrangeas in a couple of weeks. So I'm gonna put those at the very end. I think I'll have room at the very, well, I know I will because that's where I stopped the mock oranges. So I'm gonna put the forsythia in front of the astilbe way down on that end because I'm gonna be trimming on the forsythia so it will not grow to its potential. I'm basically pruning them every year, which is why I'm able to plant the mock orange in front of the astilbes here as well. Now, Sunflower Steve told me he's got mock oranges. He told me a four foot spacing on the mock oranges, which is what I did. That's what he does, his hydrangeas as well. When you're growing them for cut flowers, they're not gonna be growing to their potential that you see on the plant tag. So that's why I'm doing things a little bit closer in spacing. So I've also got a lot of other things coming from with the hydrangea order, a lot of other perennials. I'm very excited to, uh, and I'll share that with you guys when I do an unboxing of those, because there's, there's thousands of plants. <sighs> I'm so excited. So in here, I don't know if you guys know this, but this is where all of my Dame's Rocket grows in the tree line. Dame's Rocket is my favorite flower. It's the main part of my logo, that huge purple plume. That is Dame's Rocket, and that is what made me fall in love with flowers right here on this property as a little girl. So it's all in there. I'm very excited to see it coming back this year. I also bought more seed, and I didn't know this when I purchased the seed, but you're not supposed to start it in the spring. You're supposed to sprinkle that seed in the fall and then it'll overwinter and come back. I actually think I need to um, clean out some of the leaf litter in there because it's not coming back as profoundly as it used to. And I think that's because the leaf litter is just piling up and piling up and piling up and the seeds are not getting to the soil to start. So it's not reseeding itself as it should be. So I'm gonna clean out some of the leaf litter in there, uh, move it around a little bit, even just a couple of small patches. So I'm able to start some more Dame's Rocket from seed because it's my favorite flower, hands down. Speaking of favorite flowers, I have a new favorite tulip and I'll talk to you guys about that after I finished planting this. There's another crate of them. I couldn't fit it all in the cart. There's another crate. This one's Visions in Pink, a still be. But I also have a tulip that I grew that I kind of hate, guys. I hate it and I feel bad. I don't even want to pick it. But let's get this in the ground and then we'll go over to the tulips.
this little break here, that's the path to my cousin's house. So we leave that open because that's how we've been getting there for 30 something years. Okay, so the pink, the Visions in Pink and the Bressingham Beauty of Stilbys are in. I do have some more. Um, they're not looking so great. So these are the ones that we potted up and the other ones have still been in their bag. I was a bad lady, bad gardener. Some of them are definitely still alive, but some of them are, maybe I'm gonna try and soak them and see if they're gonna come back to life. I also have those Solomon Seal that I had potted up. Some of those, don't look so good. Others are uh, like throwing up shoots and stuff. So I'm gonna, try, I'm gonna put them over there too. I have variegated and I have regular Salomon's seal. So I'm gonna put what the living ones in and, and see if they uh, come for me this year. I also have Lily of the Valley over there. Uh, a whole mess of it in the tree line. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's not blooming yet, obviously, but I do have Creeping Charlie that's blooming. So that's fun. I haven't been making as many videos as I want to have been making lately. I just haven't been feeling great. I've, I'm puffy, I've like allergies for some reason. I don't know, are you with me with the allergies? Because my eyes, my whole face is puffy. I can't breathe through my right nostril. I started taking allergy medication, so hopefully that's gonna help me. I've even been like shortness of breath and stuff. I know it's because of all the pollen in the air and stuff like that, but I'm not one usually to suffer from allergies. So it's something different this year that's been bothering me. So hopefully once this allergy medication kicks in, I'll be able to, to show more of what I've been doing around the farm because so much is going on. It's so exciting. I'm very excited about everything that's happening here this year. Um, so Mother's Day is this weekend and I have, so far I have 35 pre-order for bouquets for Mother's Day. I also have my CSA on top of that. And so it's been really a crazy week leading up to this. I'm gonna document the process in a video coming up this weekend with all the prep work and all the stuff like that. So I've just been running around like a chicken with my head cut off. So I have a lot of that prep work today to do today too, but it's so nice out that I wanna take advantage of, I mean, it's still cold, it's like 42 degrees but the sun is out and it's not raining. So I wanna get as much in the ground today as I can while at the same time prepping for Mother's Day. I actually have someone coming up to pick four bouquets up this afternoon that are unrelated to the Mother's Day sale. So lots of prep work and just business management, really. Juggling all of these hats is extremely hard. I am the butcher, the baker, the candlestick maker. I'm running the website, I'm doing sales, I'm doing sales tax and all of this stuff. And you know, you have to do all these things when you're a small business and it's, it's hard, especially when your big sales weekend and your big planting weekend fall on the same weekend. So it's been intense but it's been great and you know this is what I signed up for. I know what I'm doing here. This is I this is what I signed up for. I didn't sign up for allergies though. Ooh, the trees really are starting to bud out. It's going to be my oasis is returning. So when the trees are in complete leafed out mode, I have this oasis right here. There are trees everywhere. I can't see anything that's not on my property and it's just a very private oasis and I can't wait for it to return. So the other day on Instagram, I went to my stories and I posted this. Hi flower friends. I've been out here, it's been raining for days. I'm out here um, harvesting tulips and there's a tulip that I'm just not gonna harvest because I don't like it. Look how hot pink it is. I don't like it. I'm just letting them all open up here. I just don't like them. This is the one that I love the foliage on. I just don't like the color. It's too hot pink. I don't know, should I sell them anyway and just see if anybody wants them? I think it's called Pretty Princess, but anyway, I'm harvesting others. Lots more, yay. So I was flooded with messages. I probably a hundred messages from people saying, no, 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 it's perfect. I love it, it's hot pink. You gotta sell it. So I picked them. Let's go take a look. <laughs> Before I open this fridge, guys, I almost just ruined my entire season. I just rolled my ankle on the sidewalk. Fortunately, I caught myself before it popped. Holy guacamole, that was terrifying. So here is a preview of Mother's Day. And oh, there they are. There are those hot pink tulips. There are more out in the field. I gotta go get them. Check out this fridge. Thousands and thousands of stems and there's more out in breads 
fridge in the garage. But this is Mother's Day. I also have uh, my father's fridge in his garage that also has hundreds of tulips. Here are the rest of them. I just, I just don't. Okay, after I picked them, they started to grow on me. Maybe if they were just hot pink, but something about the variegated petals, it just, it looked weird to me, but it's starting to grow on me after I started pulling them. Plus they're kind of a little short. They're not horrible once you pull them out, but some of them are pretty, like this one right here, looks like it's four inches tall. Pull it out, there's an additional four inches under the ground, so it's not horrible. Has anybody else been experiencing? This has got multiple heads on this. This is not normal for a tulip in my experience. Multiple heads. Look at the roots on that. That's amazing. Guys, check this thing out. This is my Mother's Day gift from my family. And they gave it to me a little bit early because I have been, I mean, you guys see me carrying tray after tray after tray after tray around this 20 acre property. And they were like, I think Nicole needs a cart bigger than the cart that I've been using this morning. So this, I was gonna use this to move the astilbes over there, but this is my tulip compost. So these are all of the tulip litter it was kind of all over the ground here, but uh, we picked it up yesterday and put it in here and we're gonna go compost this. And it's, but it's made for a very convenient little area to just clean the tulips up because tulips, they kind of are a dirty mess. When you pull them, there's dirt all over them, especially because you're pulling the bulb and sometimes the leaves get dirty. So I've got a bucket of water right here that I'm just rinsing and I get all the water off. And well, I set them down over here I usually do a bunch at a time, so I usually do several at a time. So, and these tulips, guys, I would have, this is, they're too open. See how these are? I would have picked it when it was, let's see, this, this one, this one is when I would have picked it, when it was just starting to show color, when it's color cracked. And, uh, but because I was not wanting to pick them, <laughs> I, uh, let them go a little bit longer. I just didn't like them and they look like a highlighter to me. And it, but like I said, the more I look at them, the more now that I've got them out of the ground, I, they're kind of growing on me. Somebody's gonna love them, right? So now that I've showed you my least favorite tulip, oh, by the way, this is called Pretty Princess. Um, and the foliage is fantastic. It's got that white outline. I, it's beautiful. Just like a pink pink pretty princess that's enough enough i'm sorry you're not awful but my favorite tulip so far is this one it's the white parrot tulip and it has stolen my heart i want to grow nothing but these tulips next year of course that's not going to happen i'm going to grow all the kinds but look at them they it look like i feel like I, if i was to get married again which I would obviously marry the same person. If I were to have another wedding, this would be my wedding flower. I want it everywhere. It's stunning. Anyway, I'm gonna finish these pretty princess tulips, get them in the fridge, and then get some more stuff in the ground, and hopefully I'll be able to bring you guys a video all about my Mother's Day sales this weekend. So thank you guys for sticking around. We'll see you soon. You can go here. You can fit in here. Maybe you can go here. How about right here? Perhaps here. Woohoo! Holy guacamole! Oh yeah, I'm recording. <laughs> fluffy butt. Use a fluffy butt. Fluffy butt. You should take a look at that muffler, man. Do you know the muffler man? The muffler man. The muffler man. Hey, hey. Come here. Come here. She's coming. She's running. It's hysterical. Come here. I have seen. Come here. Come here. She's like a dog. Hey. What are you doing? I got nothing. I got you. <laughs> Grass? I don't want no grass. I don't want no stinking grass. So I made fruit salad this morning and this is how I'm keeping the chickens out of my astilbe. I am giving them deliciousness. 
We reach the secret weapon. Good morning. <laughs> hey guys. Look. Look. It's like in Pee Wee Herman when the, there's a fire at the pet store and he's running in and out of the building saving the animals and he keeps walking past the snake aquarium and he goes Woo, and he doesn't want to pick them and take them outside because they don't he's like Woo. that's how i feel about these tulips 